Hey, and welcome to Fit Me to Rock Fitness Podcast, a podcast for people who want to get no BS information about fitness and know that fitness is about so much more than losing scale weight. It's about feeling confident in your skin and empowered in your life. I'm your host, Tura Virta, personal trainer, strength and nutrition coach, and most of all, a husband of my beautiful wife, Miriam. Each week, my guests and me will give you some no BS fitness tips and motivate you to take action in your own personal fitness journey as we talk about nutrition, exercise, mindset, personal development, and executing in life with enjoyable but still effective strategies. If your goal is to look better, feel, and be strong, and experience transformation from inside out, you, my friend, are in the right place. Thank you for jumping in, and now let's jump into today's episode. Hi, and welcome to this Fit Me Tour Fitness Podcast episode. Today, I'm talking about how to deal with injuries in your fitness journey. So if you are in a situation that um, you have got injured, you are you have been being sick, or for other, some other reasons, you haven't been able to work out, or maybe you fell off uh, track. And uh, here, just I'm providing a couple examples of my personal examples from my clients and uh, uh, trying to help you to get out of these uh, challenging times so uh, this is uh, it it often happens that uh, you know you feel you feel like that you you might have been doing so great you have seen uh, progress and then something happens in your life and you are like that why the hell this have to happen now and um, to be sort injury suck uh, all these kind of things what uh, life is throwing for us uh, they are not easy and uh, i totally get you i a little bit for my personal experience what have been going on uh, past months uh, in my private life uh, like uh, first of all in august uh, six months ago lost my grandma and um, uh, in two months ago or a month ago uh, my dad passed away and uh, meanwhile, within that time, my wife had two miscarriages. So it have been challenging times. So I know if you, you know, and last thing what I wanted to do is to focus on my own fitness or health or, or nutrition. But um, uh, things are, uh, I somehow I like to see that uh, there is always uh, some kind of reason why this is happening for us. And um uh, and uh, you can you can always uh, learn and use these uh, challenges to make you stronger. And um, the way how I approach, like if I think uh, think it back, like uh, if I go back and you can think back your life when something like uh, what felt at the time that it is so hard. Why this happened to me? Like uh, I had a um, couple examples from my own journey when I look back now that those were actually the best things what could ever happen to me. And uh, was I was uh, when I was uh, uh, seventeen years old, I was a hockey player, uh, some talent in back home in Finland, and uh, I got uh, I got selected for national team first time in my life, and I was so excited about that opportunity to play for national team they were like at the time were nhl scouts watching the games uh, most uh, talented guys and uh, had like really really big hopes of my hockey career and then just like a week before tournament uh, i got a shot in my knee and broke my leg and i was like obviously i couldn't uh, go to that tournament and i was like that uh, it was the end of the world at the time but uh, somehow i realized already at the time even mental strength was not my one of my best things what i was doing but i was deciding that i'm going to use this time to do something else and uh, i used it uh, to train my upper body and uh, and uh, i was really putting like focusing on things what i can actually do like obviously i couldn't do any leg exercises or my legs i was uh, uh i wasn't able to walk but uh, i was thinking you know, i can i can do some kind of isolated upper body exercises and uh, actually at the time now when I look back even uh, I never got another chance uh, or I got a chance but I never used it so uh, in my national team or anything but uh, I used that time to build my upper body strength and which then later on um, I was able to make some kind of uh, living and make ice hockey for my 
as a profession for over a decade and uh, the why i was able to make it i was not maybe the fastest skater but i had a pretty hard shot so it was all that work what i did for my upper body strength at the time what which were helping me then later on to get my living from the thing what i love to do the most and the other example in my how I started my online coaching business and my coaching career was uh, after my hockey career, I started another job. And um, then for some reason, company made some changes and uh, they decided uh, that, that they don't want to have any any people working outside of office and uh, moving to another city uh, at the side of the Italy. It was never an option for me. So I couldn't uh, continue doing that work, what I loved. And... Uh, I was like, that, holy shit, what I'm going to do. I don't have anything. We were just uh, getting married with my wife. I was like, how I'm going to provide income for my family and for my wife and for us. And I didn't have any any idea. And then somehow I was like, I always kind of was excited to helping others, uh, helping doing some fitness things. And uh, that's the, that was the moment when I started my coaching career, did uh, educations uh, and uh, found it like uh, just got started. And uh, the best thing was that I didn't have any other possibility. So I had to really go all in for that one thing. And uh, there was no going back. I had to put all my focus on that one thing. And uh, now, if I think it's uh, seven, eight years ago now, I think eight years uh, and uh, and uh, when I look back now, it was the best thing what could happen. Even at the time, it was the, probably the worst thing what I could see. And uh, and now when I face a lot of uh, personal challenges at the moment, I'm thinking that, okay, maybe at the moment it feels like so hard. Why me? Why us? Uh, why it have to be so hard? But I'm still a big believer that at some point I will understand it. Maybe, who knows, maybe it's in one year, maybe it's in five years that I, I know that, okay, it was meant to be this way. And uh, there was something also good in those things what happened. Obviously, I'm not going to get my my dad back, but uh, maybe from that experience, I can help somebody else uh, who are, that they don't have to suffer so much. So, so you never know if you are facing with some injuries or struggles, uh, you know, how things are going to, turn out in future even if it's now hard you never know what uh, what will happen and a uh, few other examples i had a coaching client uh, cj a couple years ago and uh, she was also she was very uh, like ashamed that she gained uh, during covid time uh, a lot of weight and uh, and then we started to work together and uh, so she was actually one of uh, my clients i i at the time i was uh, running a free uh, coaching opportunities and uh, and uh, she got she won actually free coaching with me and uh, and we started so well she was excited to get started everything was going perfectly and then suddenly out of nowhere she had a car like pretty serious car accident got injured and she was like the first time ever in her life she have been uh, she has been uh, consistent with the training with nutrition actually seeing some results and then this accident happened uh, and luckily nothing serious happened but she was not able to work out for a while and uh, after we talked like she was also put in focus that this is uh, just something like was you know in the life will always happen something and everything is not uh, not going according to a plan or how it should ideally be but then when you it's what makes the difference is how you are reacting on those things when they are happening and uh, in uh, like in CJ's example she was uh, just focusing okay that at the time she was focusing more on uh, her nutrition game uh, learning how to prepare and plan meals and uh, uh, doing things what she could be doing like obviously she hurt her shoulder she was not able to do some strength training or or not too many even some other trainings or walk or or but we we found a way to have a plan and that this is what i'm going to tell you a little bit later if you are having uh, hard times at the moment or challenging times like i like to call them i'm not uh, i i i'm very careful with my language how i talk to myself how i talk to my clients and i'm not uh, telling that this is so bad or or it's uh, it's uh, 
uh, everything is like so bad and I, I try to use like kind of softer words like uh, that it's a challenging situation as that makes huge difference the way how you think and how you are feeling so this was a uh, this was example and uh, just literally a couple uh, hours ago I was talking with another client who I work currently with and um, uh, Samia had uh, also similar kind of situation started well first time ever staying consistent getting results putting her own health as a priority and then like something happened she had to go uh, on surgery and uh, now recovering from that and uh, obviously uh, not able to do or not allowed to do any kind of strength training or any other too much physical activity and uh, at this time we just created a plan what she is actually going to do and keep going so you know even when you have those injuries uh, uh, it's it's what you if you when you focus on things what you can do and not focus on what you can't and that makes huge huge difference because there is always something what you can do and uh, uh this is uh this is uh what is the hardest part when you are facing having struggles like injuries which uh, obviously they suck but uh but uh you are uh you have that that uh mental part mental part is that you are feeling like that now you are losing all progress if you have made some progress you are thinking that now it's all gone i'm not i'm i got so great results or I have been getting good results I was happy and now this happened why this had to happen when I'm finally seeing some results and uh, but that is that is often it's it's only that mental part if you think it uh, it's uh, it's emotional reaction and uh, if you think it like physiological side what is actually happening in a couple of weeks if you think that you have been you are uh, let's say that you do your strength training workouts a couple times a week let's say three times three four times a week and uh, you are really on track with your nutrition if you do it for two months three months or or month in a consistent pace you are obviously you are going to see some kind of results but it's not that your life is changing within a couple of months but and it's exactly the same thing if you are perfectly on spot with your uh, or you miss everything for a week or for a month or for even two to three months there is not you are not losing so much progress what you think it's it's only in your head and uh, and um, so don't don't make it too emotional harder than it have to be so what is what are then physiologically like if you think like that you are scared that you know you have been maybe doing some strength training and now you think that you are actually losing your all muscles that it's all gone like what you work so hard and uh, if you think like uh, uh, what is scientifically proven fact is that if you even if you don't do any kind of strength training for the first five to six weeks you are not going to lose any muscle mass zero zero so it's if it's five to six weeks and uh, uh, that during that time obviously if you are not able to go to gym you are you are missing that mental part and getting that kind of dopamine what you do after you finish your workouts but in physiologically part you are not losing any muscle so it takes a lot longer like gaining more muscle mass it takes a lot of time a lot of effort but good thing is that once you have it it takes also a lot of time to lose it so don't think that muscle it's not something if you are years without doing anything then it's a different thing but even for uh if you are let's say years if you have at some point of your life you have had some kind of strength in your um, body or your in your muscles it's very easy to get back as uh, you have that uh, muscle memory what is a real thing and that uh, there are so many good examples my personal experience was uh, with um, when I was a professional hockey player I quit I retired when I was uh, 30 years old and uh, it took almost a decade like nine years uh, 10 years when I didn't uh, do any I didn't touch any weights I didn't do any any strength training like some kind of body weight stuff and uh, using some pants which are which always obviously help something but I was 
so far away from strength levels when I used to play and uh, when I when I restarted everything. So just an example, when I was playing ice hockey, I had a, like a squats, almost like a one rep maximum was like over 200 kilos. And obviously that you don't care about those things, but just an example. And uh, when I started, I was like, my legs were shaking with 60 kilo squats. And uh, that's, uh, I felt like that holy shit, how I'm, because obviously I remembered what I did, what I used, how much weight I was able to lift uh, when I was uh, younger. But, um, and when I restarted, I was like that holy shit, I'm out of shape. But when I restarted, it took like uh, literally two to three, like within three months after initial start with, with having a 10 years break from any weights, weight training, I I was almost there where I was when I stopped. So it took literally three months to get back to level what I used to be after 10 years off. So this is just an example of muscle memory, how fast you are getting onto the level where you have been so it's it's a mental part like that when you just get back on track and especially like obviously if you want to go above where you have been it takes again it it's it's not that fast but to get back on that where what you have had it's it's not it doesn't take that long time and uh, if you think it like uh, uh in my case when you when you are just getting started like obviously you are so worried that you are losing all progress but uh, if it's a couple of weeks when you hit your workout first time it feels challenging it feels hard it feels he- it everything feels heavy you might be sore obviously after first workout but when you get a couple of workouts in you are back right on right back on it where you left and uh, if it's uh, if it's longer break from uh, strength training it doesn't take that long to to get with muscle memory to back on your old level so this is the advantage once you have built with your muscle it it takes like i said it takes a lot of effort to build it but it also it works also opposite exactly the same way and uh, even you feel like that you have lost all progress physiological part is not there and uh, uh so other example when you are if you are injured you can't work out so what is what is the most important thing is still on your nutrition part and especially for preventing that muscle loss is that protein protein it's it's in in all like it's it's that uh, uh, macronutrient what is fueling your muscles so if your goal is uh, it doesn't matter what kind of goal you have if your goal is to uh, lose fat and prevent that muscle loss you need to eat that protein it helps you to build muscle mass it helps you to feel fuller when you are uh, being in a diet and eating in a calorie deficit so protein is always and that is something because you even you are injured you have to eat and when you focus on getting that protein in and uh, and uh, learning i'm telling a little bit more ways also for training a little bit later how you can actually things what you can often what you can focus on what you could be doing to prevent that muscle loss and uh, prevent that uh, keep that uh, loss of progress as minimum as possible and it all starts from that protein so so don't uh, don't worry about uh, that that just make sure that you are even when you are injured you are eating enough protein and uh, you know it time when you are in search you could be using uh, learning to eat in a calorie deficit learning new things and uh, one great way how to do it is like the thinking like i said earlier think what you can affect and uh, that was the other thing what i just talked with uh, with uh, samia one of my clients about when she's injured and uh, idea what uh, what you could be doing like it when you are if you are like uh, at home you can't do you don't have you can't work out or you maybe you are at home you can't go even to work so you have maybe a little bit more time available so how to use that time and instead of like because it's it's so easy to tell when somebody's telling that you can't do anything then your mind is like right away like okay i can't do anything so um, i'm just watching tv trying to recover doing maybe some little walks or something but if you think that there is so much more what you could be doing and a good example like uh, Samia was excited that I got her like you have a plan what you are actually going to do and a great ways to create that your own plan is uh, for example 
trying new receipts like uh, uh, this is something what I what like uh, most of the people like you have probably like those 10 15 receipts what you are then alternating maybe when if you are cooking at home you know you have those 10 15 things what you are cooking and then you repeat that cycle every couple of weeks so it's not every day same at least this is what me and uh, most of the people are doing and uh, if you have uh, but if you and if those those are your habits what you are eating on a regular basis but if you are able to find one two three new things which are maybe have a little bit better macronutrients you have maybe if your goal is for example to increase your protein intake you find new ways how to add more protein and uh, and this was exactly the th- thing what i told also to samia that uh, that uh, adding learning like when she's at home she can go to work uh going trying to one new receipt every single day so it could be maybe one day it's going to be some new breakfast idea and other days it's going to be something new for lunch or for dinner and uh, or or some snacks so if you are consistent like you have that when you have a little bit more time you are able to find some new receipt trying like if that is working maybe you are not going to enjoy every single thing what you are trying to create but if you find even one new thing and can swap it with or some find a new way how to add for example more protein for your breakfast and that is something like that wow this was actually so delicious uh, i would be trying to do this more often and then when you swap those like let's say you have from those 10 receipts what you are using you have three new ones it's going to be a game changer in a long term so it's not it's just the ways how to do it like and and a um, great way is to do you have a your to-do list like if it's a uh, this week I'm going to try two new breakfast ideas and uh, three or four new lunch or dinner receipts or whatever but just finding new ways how to do it and actually learning from those foods what you are putting in there so you are you are looking like that what kind of macros I'm getting how many calories you are looking ingredients you add them you can use like a, some like I have for my clients my a nutrition app where you can save your meal you put all ingredients in save it as a meal and so next time even you cook it for let's say two to three days uh, you don't have to cook it only for one portion but you cook it for a little bit more if you enjoy it you can store it and freeze it you know that then it's done and for next time you don't you have already everything in your tracking app for example and you can just add that amount what you have been eating and when you find something what your portion size is giving you let's say 25 grams of protein at least which is a good amount of protein it could be obviously higher it could be a bit lower but i would try to keep that as a good goal to hit that 25 grams of protein it could be for your breakfast it could be for your lunch for your dinner so at least that amount if it's let's say for maybe for dinner or for lunch it could be even more like 40 40 50 grams and uh, when you hit that amount you have decent amount of uh, uh, calories that it's not too much too many calories you know you have found something what is helping you in future what you actually enjoy and this is just trying trying new kind of things and uh, there's a good website like uh, it's called supercook.com so there are several other you will find from if you google search some receipt if for example this supercook website is um, just a good example that you can put for example ingredients you have at home or or uh, what you would like to learn to do you put ingredients what you have it gives you receipts with those ingredients and then you can look at oh this looks interesting i'm trying to do this and then when you are learning uh how much actually could you first question what i would always ask from myself is that how much protein i have how many calories i have there and then try and kind of find a ways if there is for example little protein could i be adding more protein what i could be adding more to make it even more having more protein if for example because protein is something what most people are struggling and especially if you are injured it should be still your high priority to eat enough protein so these are these are great examples how to actually move forward while you are injured so so you have uh, some kind of to-do list and then um, if you you have that kind of plan on your to-do list and this was what we did with Samia also exercise part if you can't work out then 
ask from your doctor like if you have some kind of injury ask from your doctor what you are allowed to do because often doctors always say depends like which part of the world you are but uh, what i know at least in usa in italy all doctors they are very scared with all recommendations and they rather tell you that you can't do anything so the reason for this is that there is uh, so much money going on and uh, and uh, they are scared if they are telling you that uh, you know you could be doing this and uh, you do it something happens then they have the responsibility for everything and you could sue them get money out of them so it's for them it's a lot safer to say that you are not allowed to do anything and this is this is unfortunately that this is have to be this way uh, because this is doing more harm than good but it's a good example like a covid times uh, there was uh, somebody uh, some of my clients who had a covid no symptoms at all and uh, uh, her doctor told that uh, for six weeks you are not allowed to do anything so i was like that uh, okay i do respect that opinion but i think that covid if you don't have any symptoms and uh, you are getting back to an exercise obviously you have to be very careful but and increasing your efforts by the time but if you don't if you feel well if you don't have any symptoms there is no reason why you should not be doing for example strength training or some walking or or some light uh cardio exercises if that is something what your goal is so for example for strength training in covid time when i had a covid uh, i started just doing one set and couple exercises i felt okay when i and then i increased my amounts how about uh, training volumes by the, over time so so just focusing on what you can do and really really that the hardest part is to learn to listen your body and what your body and uh, and uh, when you get started again don't kind of try to overdo things but uh, remember also that what what advice you get i'm not a doctor but uh, and i'm not going to give you advice if your doctor is telling something respect it but uh, just have also your own things own thoughts that if that is actually the case and ask what you can do instead like uh, because uh, often especially like you can hopefully you can you are still able to walk if you can't walk can you do some upper body strength exercises or lower body strength exercises could you be doing uh, mobility exercises so mobility is uh, mobility exercises are often like that even you have some kind of injury mobility exercises are something what you can always do like you, you might be doing some strength uh, stretching exercises maybe they are also you should not be doing but mobility exercises are are they are not very taxing for your body and those are things like what are actually helping you then to uh, have a little bit bigger range of motion and when you are able to have bigger range of motion your strength training is coming more effective and also your normal life you don't have uh, that's that's the best way for me what you can do to prevent injury so when you are more mobile and that is something what often it's not uh, it's not body if you don't feel any pain and that is the most important thing when you do mobility exercises that you don't feel any pain so those all those things you are able to do and let's say you are trying to improve your ankle knee mobility or hip mobility which is uh, which are most common reasons for for example lower back pain or or those things and when you are able to improve those when you don't have time to do something else that's uh, you know you you always can work for something and uh, other other thing is like uh, uh if you are some athlete you know you get injured like i i was working with some younger uh goalie matthias past uh, year and uh, he had a serious hip injury so he couldn't work basically anything so uh, he was an ice hockey goalie so we decided that what you can do or any physical activity was not allowed but for him it was like a kind of uh, eye mind exercises so you were working on reactions and stuff like that so it's it's all about that finding a ways for what you can focus and ideally it's something what you maybe you don't have it's kind of thing like that you know like for example for me is like mobility exercises or stretching it's kind of something that you know i know that i should probably do a bit more but uh, you know all you can do but then when you have that 
time available when you and you have that plan what you are actually going to do so make sure you include those things what you kind of know you should be doing and uh, instead of focusing on what you can't and this is just the way how you are seeing uh, for muscle exercises for strength exercises if you are not able to for example you're not allowed to lift weights if you ask from your doctor or health provider are you able to do some isometric exercises for example all kind of holding exercises so this is this is something what is uh often it's so undervaluated like uh, exercises like just uh, flexing your biceps or your quads or any muscle you have in your body and just holding it like without actually moving and uh, these are these are uh, these kind of exercises. They are also strength exercises. And if you really like, uh, if you think like uh, some bodybuilder who is going on stage, like I'm not any bodybuilder, but you know when they are doing those poses, that they are putting tension to all muscles. Like for your you you go in front, for example, biceps is. I think that's the good example. You go in front of Miro and you put your hands up and you show your biceps and you are like a holding it there and that is actually pretty effective uh, strength exercise and uh, and these are usually often exercises if you what you can do in instead of lifting weights you are just uh, just uh, holding that tension in those muscles and that is already alone helping that you are not uh, you are actually even gaining some uh, strength and uh, and especially that you are not losing anything so those kind of exercises like just some isometric where you are holding and keeping the tension are great example of what you could probably be doing if you are allowed but uh, these are just uh, questions what you could be asking like without actually moving something or lifting anything you use your body weight and use isometric exercises and uh, and uh, why why then this is everything is so important like those examples what i told about uh, cj cutting shoulder injury in car accident and uh, samia just starting health journey for a couple of months ago and uh, finally first time staying consistent why it's so important the most important thing is that you are actually keeping that habit up what you are doing for your health so it doesn't it could be that you are adjusting your efforts you go a little bit lower what you would be ideally doing but you still keep going and it's so much easier than instead of taking that kind of break that ha, i'm not allowed to do anything you just adjust your efforts do a bit less but you still have some kind of promise what you are keeping for yourself so if it's uh, uh doing trying new receipts if it's walking if it's doing mobility exercises some mind or or kind of relaxing exercises like a meditating uh, or if it's isometric exercise doesn't matter what you are going to do but just make sure that you have some kind of plan and uh, what you are going to do at this time and when you keep that promise what you make to yourself it's so much easier than later on to add more or adjust those things what you are doing maybe adding something more when you are allowed to do more things so this uh, this uh, habit keeping it up it's the most important thing and uh, just really remembering that uh, there is you there is it doesn't exist that you can't do anything unless you are you know if you are still alive you are listening this you still have to eat and uh, unless you are you are in some machine and they are keeping you alive but you are probably not listening to this so there is always something you can do and uh, and uh, just you need to find a way how to how to have some kind of actionable plan what are helping you what are aligned with your goals and which are moving you toward for that goal and not away and uh, even if it's it feels that it's uh, it's not as much as you would like but it's something maybe what you have then when life is getting back to normal uh what you don't have so much time to focus on so so use this kind of this mental thing is to see this as an opportunity and uh, and not kind of some bad thing or setback what you can't do anything and because uh, uh, even though those injuries they suck and they are not nice things to deal with but there is also always something good about them and uh, and when you use this as a time or as a 
period of time to learn from your nutrition, learn from educate yourself with uh, with uh, macronutrients, with proteins, finding new ways how to incorporate proteins or or uh, lower calorie diets or whatever your goal is or healthier ingredients, trying new ingredients, what you maybe have access, but you have no idea what to cook. Um, for example, something I was telling that she got uh, just some like a 20 avocados from her friend and she had only thing what was in her mind was like to put avocado on a bread. And what else you could be doing is that there's so many things what you could be doing from avocados. If you just do sim- simple Google search or use that superbook.com website, you put ingredients you have you get so many ideas and if you find something what you feel like that wow this i could sounds interesting i could be trying it maybe you find something totally new and incorporating new new foods so there is always something some positive things also and uh, when you take an advantage what you can do so this is uh, this is um, the best thing you can do so and ultimately when you think that if you come through this time you can come through of anything and uh, if it doesn't kill you you it's only going to make you stronger so keep that in mind and uh, and uh, i hope uh, if you are currently injured or struggling everything is going well and you are recovering fast and uh, just for uh, hopefully this was helpful if you know somebody who is injured i would re- appreciate sharing this episode with uh, your loved ones uh, to support them and making sure that they know how to deal with injuries as they even they suck and uh, if you need any help uh, just shoot me an email turo at fitmitturo.com or um, if you are interested about coaching creating help me helping you to create plan with this time keeping you moving forward with recovery do knowing what you are actually allowed to do just uh, check all my coaching applications they will be on uh, bio or in my just you can always shoot me email or dm me in my social media like instagram and uh, we can chat if there's anything i can help you with or give you advice at this time so thank you for listening and uh, talk to you soon hold up friend Do you love Fit Me Turo Fitness Podcast? If so, the best way to say thank you is to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review on iTunes. I know every podcaster wants you to leave a review, but it's because those reviews help the podcast to reach more people. I truly want to know what you think and if this particular episode resonated with you, would you also please share it? Either send a link to someone who you think will find it valuable or take a screenshot and post it into your social media and tell your friends and family why they should listen it. Make sure you tag me so I can hear your feedback and give you a little love. And you know, if you aren't already following me on Instagram or TikTok, that's the perfect time to hit that follow button. Thank you for being here and listening to Fit Me to a Fitness Podcast.